Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today I want to give you my thoughts on the Zen 32 Z-Wave 5-button scene controller switch from Zeus. I'll also show you how to set it up in Home Assistant. Before we start, I just want to say that if at the end of this video you like it, please leave a like and also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos. If there are any questions you have, please leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. The Zen 32 is a 5-button Z-Wave switch primarily focused on scene control. Out of the box you get the switch with screws and you get a white wire to connect it to neutral. Neutral is required for the switch and you also get an instruction booklet. It has one large button that controls the internal relay of the switch and then it has four other buttons that are just dedicated to scene control. I'm not going to go over how to do the installation, it's very simple and it's also detailed in the instruction book. Once you've installed it and you've turned the power back on, you can test it out by pressing the large button. This should control the internal relay of the switch, it should turn on the light or appliance, whatever you've connected to the switch. Each button has a customizable LED indicator on it. The LED colors and brightness can be changed as well as when they should be on or off. I'll show you that later. I also really like that this switch matches my standard white wall plates from Lowe's or Home Depot. And I have had other switches that were just off white enough to be annoying, but this one matches very well. Okay, so next let's set this up in Home Assistant. Put the switch in inclusion mode by pushing the large button three times rapidly. The LED on that button will blink blue to indicate that it is ready to be included. In Z-Wave JS, click Configure, and then click Add Node. After that, click Start Inclusion. The LED on the switch will blink green when inclusion is complete. Okay, so let's look at the configuration options at Home Assistant. In the Z-Wave configuration screen, click Devices, and then click the Zen32 device that you just installed. And then click Configure Device. There are tons of options here. First, you can control when the LED is on for each button. I set the large button's LED to be on when the relay is off. This way, the LED will only be on when the light is out. I configured each of the four scene buttons LEDs to be always on. If you set this option to change the on and off state based on the state of the relay, it's not going to work the way you think because there is no relay for the switch. Instead, it's just going to turn the LED on and off every time you press the button. Next, you can set the LED color to red, green, blue, or white. Since they're really just RGB LEDs, the white is really a mix of all three colors. I set mine all to white. Here you can see me changing the different LEDs to different colors. Every time you update one of these, the big button's LED flashes green to let you know that configuration has been changed. Setting these LEDs to different colors can be helpful for people like my wife who don't like a lot of options and don't want to have to remember what each button does. This can help with that. It helps with the kids too. The next option is brightness, which I set to 100 for all of them. I really don't mind lights at night, but it's a nice feature to have if you are bothered by lights when you're sleeping. I tested this brightness feature. But I can't say I noticed a huge difference between the high, medium, and low settings for brightness. Um, I even recorded it, you can see it here, but I don't see a huge difference. The camera makes it less obvious, but again, I don't mind lights at night. So that's going to be up to you if you think that's a nice feature. Next, there's an option to turn the relay off after a set amount of time. I guess this might be useful if I was controlling a bathroom fan or something. I left this blank. The next field allows you to have a delay before the relay comes on. I also left this one blank. The next feature is pretty cool. It allows you to control what would happen in the case of a power outage. I set this to return the switch to the state it was in before the power failure occurred. But the option to set them all to off is nice as well. This last option is super cool and a must have in my opinion for these scene controller switches. Like I showed in my Innovelli Red Series on off switch review, you can disable the internal relay. This puts the switch in smart bulb mode, which prevents the power from being cut to the light when you turn the switch off. In this case, the relay button, the large one, does nothing except for control scenes. The idea is that you would put a smart bulb in the light socket, which needs continuous power, and then use that button to control the bulb via Home Assistant automation. The one thing with the Innovelli switch is that it did not give the option to disable both local and Z-Wave control like this one does. Okay, now let's look at installing a blueprint in Home Assistant. 
In order to do automations in Home Assistant, you're going to need a blueprint for this switch. I found one by this guy in the Home Assistant community that worked well. In order to install the blueprint, copy the link, which I'll leave in the description, and then head back to Home Assistant. In the Blueprints menu, click Import Blueprint in the bottom right hand corner, and then paste the link you copied into the Blueprint path. Click Preview Blueprint and then click Import Blueprint. In this case, there were some updates to the Blueprint after it was first made. These were noted in the comments, so we'll need to modify this Blueprint. So go back to the Blueprint URL, and you can see the trigger event type has to be updated because there was an update to ZWAVE.js. Copy the new text, and then head back to Home Assistant. In Home Assistant File Editor, navigate to Config Blueprints Automation FXIT, and then Click the blueprint that you just imported. Scroll down to the trigger section of the blueprint and replace the appropriate text. Click save once you're done and now you're ready to automate. Okay, so now click configuration and then click automations. Click add automation and then click select a blueprint. And then choose the Zen32 blueprint that you just installed. Select the device that you added and then scroll through the options. In this blueprint, the large button is called scene five and the four buttons on the bottom are labeled scenes one through four left to right top to bottom each button has seven triggers it's a single press a double press triple press quadruple press five press a held and released this is a total of 35 automation triggers in one switch that is nuts once you set how you want the automation to run you can save it and test it out Okay, so I want to quickly just show you how I use this. So I have a setup in my master bedroom and I have the large button just controlling the relay, which is turning our ceiling light on and off in the bedroom. Then I have the top left scene one button controlling the under bed LED strip. Button number two and button number three I actually don't use. But the fourth button I use to control my nighttime scene. I actually have an automation that sets the nighttime scene which shuts off a bunch of lights in the house and just turns on some night lights and i control that automation using nfc tag on my nightstand when i set my phone down going to bed it triggers this scene which turns all these lights off and turns on the night lights however if i go to bed first my wife needs to be able to trigger this automation but since she doesn't have an nfc tag on her bed and doesn't really want one i made this easy for her to do by just pressing the bottom right button. Pressing that button does the same thing as the NFC tag and it makes it so that if she comes to bed after me, she can trigger this routine. Okay, so lastly, I just wanna do a comparison between this switch and a switch that's coming out, it's on pre-order by Innovelli. The Innovelli Red Series 5 button smart switch has a few options that I wish this switch had. It has LEDs that not only are customizable, but you can actually use them within Home Assistant for notifications. For example, if a garage door is open or something, you can have it lit up red. There's a ton of different things you can do with these LEDs. Actually, Innovelli has a pretty savage list of comparisons between these two that kind of show how you should be buying the Innovelli one over the Zen 32. I won't make any comments until I've tried the Innovelli one, but please leave a comment if you want to see me review it when it comes out. What I would say for now is that the price difference is the biggest deal. Zen 32 is quite a bit cheaper than the Innovelli, so if you're on a budget, Zen 32 is great. If the Innovelli switch performs as well as the other ones that they make do, then it is a great buy. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's all I have for you. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more, and we'll see you in the next one.